Um, all right, so I'm going to give Jeff an intro here. For those of you who don't know Jeff, I have a bio here, and I'm going to read through it. Um, he's been uh, a financial advisor now for about 30, approximately 30 years. It'll be his 30th anniversary with Northwestern Mutual here in April. Congratulations on that. Um, throughout his career, um, Jeff has received numerous awards and recognition. I'm not going to go through all those awards because there's a lot of them, and a lot of us won't know what they mean, but they're all really good. He's an upper echelon of what he does, and um, he's very highly respected nationally for uh, his work and what he does, and I think it's important to, to, to say. Um, um, his personal philosophy is that people need healing, and so, especially, uh, Jeff specializes in taking the time to truly listen to his clients and then ask questions that reveal the scope of their concerns. Jeff and his team provide their clients with a holistic approach to planning. Uh, they take pride in developing innovative and individual solutions and providing expert guidance that allows their clients to discover financial peace of mind. Um, Jeff does a lot of uh, countless things here in regards to things for the community and outreach. Um, him and his, uh, he and his wife, Lynn, uh, live in New Hampshire. He's actually joining us uh, from down south right now. Um, he's visiting his, wife, his daughter, Kirsten. He has two daughters, Kirsten and Kira. Uh, Kara, and, um, Last but not least, uh, Jeff enjoys meditation, reading, jet skiing, go-karting. And if you ask him what he enjoys, uh, gives, brings him the biggest joy, he would say simply being family. So Jeff at heart is a, is a family gentleman. Um, he's a, become a, a good friend. Um, he's also uh, my fin uh, Joel and I financial advisor. And so I'm, uh, I'm delighted uh, to have him here in discussion with us. And, um, I, and the, the whole point of this, this conversation really is we'd like you all to walk away with, with um, one is, is at a, a different vantage point on how you're looking at yourself, your future, and the economics tied to your future. And hopefully and maybe a note or an action item that you can take away from this that would help you. And that's, that's the intention. Um, that, 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 that's, that's our all ideal goal. And let's start with, a, I'm going to start Jeff here with the, um, really what, what we're here to, to talk about. And that is this idea of um, certainty. Certainty, like if you look at certainty or uncertainty, it's in essence, it's a construct. And it's fascinating because in order for any of us to have any level of certainty or uncertainty, we have rules that we don't think about these rules but we, we have like internally in our mind, we've created beliefs and, and thought processes from our past experience or experience of others that ties us to what we find to be certain. And I wanna start with two questions for everyone that you can write down. These are questions that you can take away um, and we'll, I'll share this recording with you too also. At, uh, ne next week you'll get a recording of this. But um, in essence, what, what, what these two questions are is number one is, what do you believe about certainty? It's something you can write down, like what is it that I truly believe about certainty? And the second question is, is what needs to happen in order for me to have certainty, right? So like, what are your own rules about what needs to happen in order for you to have an element of certainty? So um, with that all, all being said, um, Jeff, let's, let's kind of start where we kind of got some context here. And I have you on two. Are you on, uh, let's see here. Uh, okay, I'm going to, if someone come, if anyone gets feedback, just let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll do something on the mute side of it. So Jeff, let's, let's say you're sitting down with someone right now and they're, they've got some fear and they've got some uncertainty tied to what's, what's happening, right? And what I'd like, like you to do is, is just give me some you know, perspective on what you'd say or what you'd ask that person, um, you know, if they, they were to, to, to give you a call today. So thanks, and, um, and thanks everybody for joining. Uh, my apologies. Um, I had, uh, I'm not the most technically savvy person. And, um, and so, um, the feedback was from me because I was running two devices, Chris. So if someone came to me and said, okay, I've got these concerns about kind of what's going on. I've got this uncertainty. Um, the three things come immediately to mind. One is, do you have a written strategic plan in place 
So like, what have you done so far? Do you have a written strategic plan in place that brings alignment to your business, your investments, your real estate, your retirement plans for a common purpose? And if the answer to that is, um, yes, I, I do have that plan in place. My question would be, what does it say? What does it say? What does the plan say? And is there an intellectual reason to worry? And so sometimes we worry because we've just got these emotional inputs. We've got, we've got stuff that's going on, whether it's in the media or whether it's um, things that I've got going on, I'm thinking about, is there a real reason to worry? If I don't have an advisor, if I don't have a strategic plan in place, um, then maybe we could chat and just talk through and maybe I could just listen, ask some questions and provide some guidance. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, what have you decided? So the first is, do you have a plan? Second is, what have you decided about yourself, your business or your future? So when I think about two months ago and I think about the decisions that I made uh, when all this started, I had decided personally whoa, there's uncertainty. Those are decisions that I made. There's uncertainty. I'm not really sure how it's going to work out. Not sure how it's going to work out. The psychology was just incredible. And what I came to realize is that, um, and people will talk about the, like what's normal, what's the new normal. And what I came to realize is that this moment is normal. Um, I also came to realize that after being in the business for 30 years, and many people on this phone, you've been in business for a period of time, and you've got natural ability and intellect. And so this whole concept of what have I decided, and then what do I choose to decide tomorrow? And then the third question is, and this might sound like, wow, that's a really weird question, is if I've got a level of uncertainty, what did your parents teach you about money? So if it's money related, what did your parents teach you? This question is for whoever that advisor is, but it's also for the individual. It's also for you to reflect back because this is where this internal hardwiring became, um, it kind of became grounded. This is where your values and your thoughts around money um, started. It's really just what you witnessed and what you watched. It's not right or wrong. It's not, there's nothing, it's not bad necessarily. But if I could understand that, and if we could understand it together, um, we can have a much more fruitful conversation. That's really good. Um, you know, I, I think there, this, it's one of the challenges folks have with our current situation is we can look back on history, right? And um, you know, I'm 50. You're in your 50s, um, but you know, there's there's been downturns we've been through, um, right, in our lives. You and I, um, and probably others on on here with us. But we also know that there's a lot of elements with the current situation that um, haven't never really been outside the Great Depression. Maybe um, there really hasn't been a lot of history tied to it, and it it can be. I think it can create where minds can start to get into that and create a lot of fear in relationship to what you know what, what, what's going to happen. Um, but we also know that you know when it's it's in, it's 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 really fascinating to me because and you know I've talked about this before, but the more we want certainty and things not to change, the harder um, things can ha you know, can be in our lives. But the fact of the matter is is that impermanence exists all the time, like. Things are always in flux. Things are always changing all the time regardless. Yet our resistance comes from um, not wanting it, not liking it. Um, you know, it's like our whole world's in a matter of several weeks to working from home, <laughs> you know, navigating, building a business, working from home. A lot of people are that are on here. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty tied to what's going on. And uh, we could create uncertainty around, you know, health and wellness. But the fact of the matter is there are things certain, right? Like um, there, there, and then when we talked about yesterday, I mean, how do we, how do we separate what's real and what's not real? What would you say about that? Like what, how do I, like what, what really specifically I can make observations, but how do I, how do I distinguish that? Distinguish between, say that one more time, Chris, distinguish between yeah, so what's real like, and what isn't. I, mean, I can look at, so I can look at like, well, 
all right, uh, the, the journal had yesterday, like, you know, retail sales down like 50%, um, you know, March and that April numbers happening. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. So that's, yeah, good. that's a real stat, right? But I can take that and, and then I can spin it into a story. Oh, you, oh yeah, absolutely can. So, um, so I think of this kind of like, so what, what perspective? So I was talking to a client this morning and she was reading from the IMF out of the Wall Street Journal. We um, had, you know, maybe headed for a global depression like 1929. Right. And um, I said to her, I said, well, at this point, no one knows enough to be a pessimist. And no one knows enough to be an optimist. Um, in other words, we don't have any information. And there is this split between social media and, um, and paid for media. And when I look at both of those, you've got to understand that we're taking data points day by day by day. So we caution our clients right now, if you're watching uh, CNN or Fox News or you're reading the newspaper, these reports are coming from based on what we know. We're in the middle of earnings season and boy, we're gonna get more information in a week, in two weeks and three weeks. And we're probably gonna hear a new set of uh, data, a new, a new line, a new response. Um, so that said, we've never seen this before, right? Never shut down, never shut down Main Street. We've had other pandemics, if we go back through history, but never have we responded in this way. Um, what we do know is this, we do know that markets recover. That we do know. So there's things that we don't know, but we do know that markets recover. We know that people recover. 2000, 2001, 2008, uh, when I came into this business, the early 1990s, there was untold worry, untold worry. Um, my opinion, people need a space to be heard. If you ask me what we've been doing over the past couple of weeks, and I am gonna jump aside to get right to your question, uh, Chris, but last couple of weeks we've had conversation after conversation and there has been um, a need to be heard, a need to be heard. Um, and so we're interested in what's running through our clients' minds, fully recognizing that if I go back in all of history, markets and people recover. Now, the way we interpret this is our own personal journey. That journey gets divided in between the intellectual and the emotional. The intellectual, when we're in a state of stress, we actually lose, they say physiologically, the blood actually flows out of the hominid or the frontal lobe, and we lose our critical thinking capabilities. Um, so that's what probably touched a lot of people early on. What I'm beginning to witness is almost like the blood is flowing back into people's frontal lobes based on the conversations we've had just this past week. But boy, oh boy, uh, is it nice to have somebody to talk to. And I'm not trying to overstate um, our team at all. I'm saying like in this, in this world and in this industry, it's nice to be able to have a conversation with someone who's studying this hour by hour and recognize, recognizing that those things those two pieces exist, the intellectual versus the emotional. As I personally moved through the emotional stuff, which goes back three, four weeks, and I won't bore you with uh, why I'm in Alabama and all this stuff, um, my, uh, my intellectual thinking wasn't exactly where it is today. And in the last seven days, what I've realized is I, I'm not alone. I've got a business that's been around for 30 years and, and any, any of us, and I'm looking, for, I'm looking at the people who are on this call, you are hardwired. You're hardwired to do what got you here, but you may just temporarily forget. Um, I have one line that I, um, it's, it's kind of a mantra of mine, and that is things always work out. In the end, in my 30 years and my 53 years, I've had plenty of occasions to be concerned and what I've noticed is over and over, things work out. And it is the space, that space between now and them working out, that I tend to complicate it or, uh, or, uh, or maybe I move through it, so. Yeah, that's great. So um, having some faith in what's possible. And I, what else I heard you saying there is, um, I think really a relevant point is, as we look at it's really easy to look at what I can't do or where I'm stuck or why things aren't going to work or where the wheels are going to come off the bus, but there's no empowerment there. Right? Like you're saying, it's like, well, what, there's always something you can do. 
And we also know that any point in time in history, all of them, any time that there's a shift like this one, which is a pretty big one, it creates a massive opportunity for someone to come out even better on the other side. It's happened historically. We could study it up and down, right? And um, and I, I think we, the, I think the goal of when we're working with people is to get them to to get them out out of out of fear and into a level of certainty, practicing the level of faith of some sort, but also just realizing that there is something I can do, right? If I have the right mindset, I can start, as you said, I can get, I get out of my fight or flight scenario, get my nervous system to a place where I can activate my prefrontal cortex and I can see opportunities. But the fact of the matter is if you're locked up in fear and uncertainty, you will not see opportunities. You won't. You're going to try to escape what you can't get. And um, with that in mind, I kind of wanted to move into um, Dr. Mark Hyman, who I'm a huge fan of. If you don't know who he is, he's uh, you can look him up. He's a best-selling author, um, really solid um, doc. Um, but he stated that humanity is, he, he believes humanity is taking existential breath and a, a existential breath, I can't even say it. This, this is a time to think about our previous normal lives and how we want to reinvent them when this whole thing is over, right? And some people are looking at this as a, as a pause. I like to think of it as, well, let's, let's call it a reset to a degree. Like what can we reset from this experience? Because if we thought this, the pause button goes on and then it's just gonna go off in six weeks and everything goes back to normal and nothing changed, that, that's not accurate. We already had this experience, but how are we gonna recognize that? And I, I know both of our works, the thing that we both do, Jeff, is we, we lead with this idea and the premise behind your, your, your vision and what you wanna create. And, and can you, can you give, share from your perspective, like what have you seen with folks um, and, and, and where do you find people get muddied up in figuring out what they really want, right? For their future, short-term, mid-term, long-term. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a really, really good question. And just to come back to something that you just said around how do I emerge from this, you know, like versus the pause and, um, what we have started to, what I've started to ask is think like really proactively towards our clients. And, and that question is, how do you want to emerge from this? What would your, in fact, I think someone listening will, this will sound familiar. Um, what will your first hundred days look like? So we've spent a few weeks kind of in this space of uncertainty and I'm not sure how it's going to go, et cetera, et cetera. But it's time, in my opinion, to actually start asking, how do I want to emerge? Because we will emerge. We will emerge the same, or we could argue that everybody changes, but I'm going to say that, no, we have a great opportunity right now to give thought to, what have I learned during this time period? And I have learned things during this time period, and I've already begun to do some writing, which I'm going to kind of weave into this vision thing a little bit, which you kind of alluded to, um, Chris. But how do I want to emerge? And what lessons do I want to take from today going forward? So uh, one of the things that we have experienced in working with clients over the years, and this goes back 25 years ago for me, when someone taught me how to begin to write and write in a specific way um, and give thought to what I would like life to look like. So I call this vision. And a, a vision, a written vision, is what I would call a guidance system. Now, it depends on your experience around vision and whatnot. That might sound like, well, whatever. And then other people, if they've talked through this or been through this, they would say, yes, totally. It sets the trajectory. Now, why is that? We have to look a little bit deeper. Um, human beings move in the direction of their most dominant thoughts, whether we like it or not. That, that is how we, we do it. Um, they say to cyclists, uh, if you're, if you're, riding your bike down the road, never look at the pothole trying to avoid it. Never look at the pothole and that, because you'll hit it. And that sounds like, no, there's no way that could, no way that could happen. Well, I've done it with my car and I've looked at a pot like knowing and I've hit the, uh, hit the pothole and I'm like, oh, that works. So we move in the direction of our most dominant thoughts, but the challenge is we think it's 1200 words per minute and between 30 and 40,000 thoughts per day go through a subconscious mind. So now the question is, if that's true, then how would I harness that? And so all data and analysis and research supports that 81% of what you write down 
if written down properly, comes true. 81% of what you write down, if written down properly, comes true. That sets the guidance system. And so when we began to integrate this into the work that we do, um, there's a handful of clients. Many will say, oh, that's a really cool idea, but they refuse or they um, elect not to participate. I say that in a very kind way. Um, our experience, when any one of our clients goes through this process of which we guide, and there's generally three, four, and five revisions of it, uh, the probabilities go way up, like 90, 95% that A, they will accomplish 81% of what's on there, but B, our collaborative work together becomes amazing because they got clarity. Only, only because they got clarity. It's really not that complex. And our role is to kind of be a pawn in the process and just guide. It's not to write it. It's not to judge it. It's really just to make sure that the language and words that are used within that um, are fully supportive. Um, words matter. It makes a difference. We move in the direction of our most dominant thoughts and the subconscious mind interprets these written words and spoken words verbatim, which is why I'm such a, a like a, a nitpick on the words that, are, that go into that vision. One last interesting point on our path to, to growth and uh, all of us who are listening have these incredible levels of success in our life. There is one requirement. That requirement is something called a terror barrier. So when we get into vision work, I make it very clear from the beginning that we're here from now all the way through this. What is a terror barrier? Um, the subconscious mind, sole responsibility is to keep you safe. It's sole responsibility is to keep you safe. So when you start crafting these visions and you're going, you want to go to a new place, you will experience almost like a quick hit of, oh my gosh, uh, all of a sudden things are happening. You're right, Jeff, the things that I wrote down on that, they're starting to happen. And the only reason they're happening, it's not really magic, it's just more science. The, the world just kind of reflects back what you're clear on. The moment the subconscious mind recognizes this, it also recognizes that it doesn't know it will be safe where you're headed. And so it brings into our lives those things that make it feel more comfortable. Like Jeff, it was way more comfortable to want. I knew what want was. Want was really, I was close to want for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. I don't know what it's like to get. And all of a sudden I'm starting to get. And um, again, we have worked with countless people and boy, oh boy, this will show up. It's a part of the deal. And what we must do is just respectfully decline to participate, recognizing that is a necessary step in growth. So. Yeah, and I, I think that's, it's, um, as someone says, you mentioned earlier when talking about visions, you said it's, it's, there's a process and there's several generate revisions of it, right? And part of that process from my experience um, is, is going and making sure that it's what we want and not what we don't want. And mm -hmm. that's one thing that you know, is really critical because if I'm saying like, well, I don't want debt. I don't want to come out of this a lot of so I can put in my vision statement. I don't want to come out of this with piles of debt. Well, yeah, that's why words matter. Yeah, words matter big time, right? So what, what does it mean? I want to come out of this with excessive cash flow, whatever that, whatever that means to you. But as you, as you, one of the action items we'll, we'll suggest to you today is get clear, maybe make a 45 or 60 day vision. Jeff had created one, inspired me, I created one. I uh, just looked at it this morning again. Um, to get, what, how do I want life to look at the end of May? That's, that's where my mind stands right now for, for us. Um, but make sure it's what you want. You cannot get to where you wanna go by trying to avoid what you don't want to happen. The, um, the, so let's, let's move into, let's say I'm out here right now and I'm in, a, I'm in a place like, okay, factually, I can look at, all right, here's, here's my budget for my business. Here's where my, my, my personal budget is. Here's where my current income is. And here's my projected cash flow for the next 30 days based upon some change potentially that's happened in the marketplace. Maybe I'm into more of a, I'll call it a, a survival paradigm or survival, I mean, you know, emotional context 
what would you what would you recommend to that person and how how would you approach that that conversation in regards to budgeting yeah so the first thing and it's going to come back to this you'll hear this theme over and over it's to ask questions and then listen and so so often uh, when someone has been an active listener to me i've worked with different consultants over the years chris you and i have worked together for many years so think of the times where I've come to you and I've said, wow, I've got this thing going on. Um, you generally ask me questions that make me think. And, and so that's kind of like the first line of defense, so to speak, or the first line of offense. Um, you may have the answers and just haven't been asked the questions. So, um, so we want to just go in and understand, okay, what's the real fear? What's the real worry? Um, from an emotion standpoint, like where, where are the anxieties coming from? Have you, have you ever experienced this before? And sometimes we forget that we've actually had experiences like this before. Sure. We've, we've been worried. And, um, and it can be super helpful to talk through what happened the last time. And yeah. maybe even, maybe even, so a question that I've asked to many lately is what stories what stories have you concluded about what's going on? And so create a space to be heard. Secondly is perspective. And so I was talking to someone this morning, we were talking about budgeting and I was talking about uh, a little bit about what, uh, what I'm doing. And she said, we're, we're really just narrowing our budget down um, into, um, we're just skinning it down is the words that she used. And she said, so we're being cheap, we're being, and, and I said, well, maybe, maybe you could use the word cheap or maybe you could use the word careful. Um, um, the majority of our clients own their own companies and there are times where they run very carefully, not cheap, not carelessly, just very careful. So if you have a budget, it might be useful to say, when was the last time you reviewed it and what does it say? And the next thing we'll do is we'll walk through it together. Let's just take a look at it. Um, as a part of some of the stuff that we do, um, we help our clients with budgeting. And it's, um, and I'm not thinking about times like today where we're, we might be, we've got these anxieties. Uh, I'm talking about just regular times and every single time with very few exception, people find that they are better positioned from a budget standpoint than they originally anticipated. And the reason that this is true is because they just hadn't looked at it, just hadn't shined a light on it. So ask good questions, shine a light on it so that you can actually see what's so versus the things that maybe when we get into fear or worry, we start making stuff up. Fair statement, Chris? Yeah, definitely, um, for sure. And I think when if you look at it, it's a really good point you said about um, cheap too, because there's a paradigm associated with that word, right? Words are important, as you said earlier. And um, I think people look at, okay, we're going to cut our budget, but what exactly does that mean and where, right? Intentionally. And I think that, you know, you and I had conversations about even like personnel and like, I was looking at my own personnel and like, okay, do I want to cut any hours. But the fact of the matter is, um, you know, cause we've had a, a cup, not a lot, but a couple clients pause or come off or whatever, and so, but you also, you can look at like what's going to happen in the future. And I've had some clients go ahead and just like, basically like, well, I'm just going to cut a bunch of people right now and get ahead of this. But the fact of the matter is it's making a decision without enough information, as you said earlier, but from my perspective, um, maybe that's the right thing to do. Maybe it's not depending on your industry. But the fact of the matter is, is if I, I've really got to be careful when I look at my budget, not to bring fear into the numbers, because it's not going to help me um, navigate and make decisions. And um, would you, what, what's your experience in regards to like, I'm going to live uh, on a shoestring or like, what, like how, how do we, show, if it we're not think, thinking of entrepreneurs, right? People who run and own their business who are making strategic, critical decisions who um, are navigating all this, right? And how they navigate it's going to be a key element and how they come out the other side what would you say to someone that's, that wants to cut things down to a, such a level that it's going to impact their family and how things are at home? Like, what's, what's your perspective on that? Yeah, well, um, so it depends. That's the lawyer answer, right? It depends. Yeah. 
Um, so is it is it required? I mean, I mean, so the first week or two, we spoke with clients, and I had one, I had one client um, email me saying, uh, "Take everything out of the market. I'm scared." Uh, on one of the worst days. Yeah. And so I called her up and I said, um, "You know, can we talk?" And of course, she took my call. She's like, "Yes, yes, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm thinking." And I said, um, "You've hired us to do two things. One of them is to help manage money, but the other is to help manage your plan." And those are not the same. So what goes on with your money and what goes on with your plan are not necessarily interconnected. Um, her plan was to not require any of that money for four years. And so she was making an emotional decision, right? An emotional reaction to something where that money was not even required for four years. And do you think I'm concerned about four years from now? Now, nobody ever knows, right? We don't really know, but do I have any undying or die concern about four years from now? And the answer is no. And, and as I talk through this, it comes back to this. Um, you, right now, you didn't, she didn't have enough information. She didn't know enough to be worried. Right. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. So, oh, first, right. so first is like, do you really, is there a cause? Now, maybe there's cause to worry. But, we, but let's start with, is there a real reason to? And so the initial reactions were total fear, total worry from many of our clients. And now it's four weeks later. And I was talking to someone and he said, you know what, we're actually like, it's actually working through better than we thought. And I'm hearing that more and more and more. Now, I don't want to not answer your question, Chris. So if I didn't get it, please ask it again. Cause I know I might've gone left a little. Well, it's, it's a tough question to answer because I think it's, it's so personal in nature for different people. Right. And I mean, in some cases we're in with our business, we're going to cut spending so that as, as, as Adam says here, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to create cash for future opportunity with, cause I know there's going to be opportunity in the market. So there's, I mean, every, every scenario is different, but I think the context you want to take away from this conversation is, is how am I, what's my mindset and my emotion linked to my decision in relationship to how I'm managing my money. If it's out of fear and out of worry, and that's how I'm managing my decision, then that that may not be the place I, I wanna be. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I well, I totally agree. And just think about anybody here who runs their own company. Do, do you know, how, how great would your company, your organization, or your team be if you made choices and decisions out of fear? And the answer yeah. is no way. And that's why you take care of your body, you work out, and um, maybe if you really enjoy that steak with a glass of wine, or you might do that differently on a Friday night than you do on a Monday morning before a big presentation, right? So right. our state of life is a direct reflection of our state of mind. So we, we are very, very careful. At times like this, we can forget, Chris. That's actually what goes on. We just forget. When we get scared, we forget. We forget how capable we are. We forget where we can forget what reality actually is or isn't. And, um, and frankly, I'm there. I, I recognize that it happens. And I'm not trying to make this about me, kind of like it sounds that way. But it's like, like our job as an advisor is to go there and listen and then meet someone where they're at. And I can't tell you how many times it's actually not quite as horrible as someone might think. But in those cases where it's, they've got to be careful and they've got to, so we just talk through it. Like we just, we just go through it and we help set up and guide them towards either lines of credit or, or backup or whatever. And then we don't quit. <laughs> well, we don't quit on you. Right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. And people shouldn't quit on themselves first. So that's, that's a really good, um, yeah. really good point. So let's let's go over. Um, I've got a, just a summary here, and then um, we'll we'll pause and go into some Q and A. Um, one is is that I'm, I've got like five points here that people can take uh, away, and then I've got one more file, last question for Jeff before anyone else does. Um, one is is um, as you're sitting out there, um, write down you know, what lessons are, are you know. Ask yourself what lessons are you taking from this experience? This whole experience since life's changed in the last whatever four weeks, six weeks in, in our reality, what lessons have you learned? Second thing is um, get clear on what you want. We talked about a vision, short-term vision, maybe build a 60-day vision, 
And then also, what, what, what can you take from this reinvention of yourself? How do you want to end up in six months, a year, three years? Tend to sit down and start writing some of that out. It's very, very important to talk about that. Third thing is, we talk, barely, Jeff mentioned this just very briefly, but take care of yourself. Um, what I mean by that is sleep's critical right now. Make sure you get your sleep. You want to take care of your immunity anyway. Sleep's one of the top things. Nutrition, how you're feeding your body is critical. Um, manage stress. Stress. We all need to manage our stress. So um, tension is contagious. So let's, we, need to, we need to really take control of our neurology. Minimize what's coming in from the outside. How much media you're letting into your home, I recommend. Um, also, um, get exercise, do what you need to do to get exercise. And I would highly encourage you if you haven't started doing something like meditation or some level of breath work, because that actually does, if you can slow your breathing, you can slow down your heart rate. And you actually, there's a direct correlation to the thoughts in your mind and how fast they run and how much you breathe. And the fact of the matter is the, the, like, if you look at like Zen masters and people that are like professional meditators, if you will, they can breathe, they breathe about five to six minutes, uh, five, six times a minute in full meditation. And we're breathing 15, 16 times a minute, <laughs> oftentimes when our stress, stress is high. So if you can just low, slow down your breathing, believe it or not, you can actually tune in and get still and get to a good, a good place, a good centered place. And that's where you want to make decisions like this. Um, number four, um, build some type of budget. Okay. Just build a budget. Look at Jeff saying, look at the numbers, look at the numbers, get real and where your numbers are at. And sometimes we, we don't want to look at the numbers because we're afraid to look at the numbers, but pay attention to that. If that's you, um, you'll know if you're afraid to look at the numbers, if you have a real good story of why you can't get to the numbers, <laughs> that's a good, that's a good clue. Um, and then last thing I would recommend, uh, Jeff would recommend is secure some advisement. Um, someone from the outside, a consultant, uh, someone who, uh, could be a coach, could be a mentor, could be a financial advisor. And the last question I had for Jeff is like, let's say I, I really wanted to, to find someone to give me some advice at this time. I mean, I'm, I don't think I want to go on and Google um, an advisor. Um, how would you recommend finding someone and vetting them out? What would, would your input be on that? Yeah, that's a, so that's a really, really good question. Um, so uh, down here, I'll use a little bit of an analogy. So uh, I'm down here. Our daughter had surgery, back surgery, a couple months ago in Alabama. So uh, up in New Hampshire, I could, I could tell you exactly where we would go. Down here, I didn't know. So I got a referral and I kind of checked that out. But we didn't have a lot of time to go check in everything out. And so we got a referral to a really, really good neurosurgeon. Um, so I would do the same. So I would uh, get a referral from someone that you trust, someone that you know, and then interview them. And then I'd look for um, maybe three key characteristics. One of them is credentials. So it would be nice to see what we call letters after their name, such that they're a student of the business. So chartered financial consultant, CLU, CFP, uh, masters, things like that. I, want, I, would, I would want to work with somebody who um, doesn't, isn't just in the industry, but has a fair amount of learned, um, like schooled um, knowledge, and then, and then I want them to have uh, real knowledge, right? You can, uh, you can teach a class in college, but to experience real business, it's different than just teaching the course. Um, so credentials, then um, watch for the degree that they listen, which requires questions, and that's my third point, the degree that they listen versus talk about product and themselves. Um, it's, it's human nature to speak for selfish reasons, and I fall prey to it sometimes. Um, and by and large, I work very hard at um, asking really, really good questions, which is my third point. It's the questions they ask. So ask really, really good questions and then listen. Questions could be uh, traditional financial planning questions or advisor questions, which is all the data, the numbers. Um, it's kind of like what I would call the boring stuff. But I'd, I'd want someone who's going to ask me what I would call out of the box questions. Ask me something that no one else has asked me. Get to know my financial behavior, my, um, the, the emotion and the psychology. And what I found is 
I mean, you've got someone who can start to go into those or make inroads into there, you can really move mountains. And the reason you can move mountains is money in our experience is about 10% of the money and all that, and it is 90% how you view it and your behavior. Um, we, would, we would love to see um, any advisor make sure they create a space to be heard. So when you're interviewing, um, whoever the advisor is, just determine if you feel as though you're being heard. Like, has a space been created? And that's really just through asking questions that are outside of the data. And then lastly, um, listen for how often they meet with their clients. So how often do they meet with them? Um, so regularly to us is anywhere from two to four times per year. And what happens, one could argue, it's like, well, that just makes total sense, right? That's how you develop the relationship. But what's beneath that, what I found is that if an advisor does that and you're working with them, the, the faith and confidence that you have in what they do will grow, right? So, so in our world, we work by referral only. So there's always some connection to somebody, but still we don't take it for granted. I mean, there's like a shred of a shred of a shred of a relationship. And in most cases, it takes years, if not decades, so that we can get to the point where um, we simultaneously as, as a, a client is, is like increasing their faith in what we do, how we do it and all that. Simultaneously, we are able to use words, language, themes and examples that resonate with you specifically. And so I'd look for just somebody who is willing to meet with you, um, you know, however many times per year, a minimum of one, but we really like two, three, four times per year. That allows us to really stay in, in someone's world and, um, and whatever. Again, see, it's kind of coming back to me and I don't mean it, um, but I'm so personally connected to the experience that we really want to have. I'd like to think that there were hundreds and hundreds and thousands of advisors and um, I know they're out there. So that would be my process. Right. Thank you. That's, uh, that's really good. Um, all right. So what I'm going to do is if you guys have questions, um, there's a lot to unmute. So what I'm going to, uh, if you have a question, you can type it in the box and then I can unmute you. I'm going to also right now as I'm doing that. So again, just in the chat box, um, go ahead and type away if you have any questions or say I have a question and I can unmute you. I'm going to stop the recording right now and it is stopped. For more information, please visit chrisyonker.com and northwesternmutual.com.